All right, problem 21. We're looking for the number of discontinuities that are removable. That essentially means when you're um, doing the algebra, you can factor a group out. Um, on a graph, it's still going to be like a whole, like it'll still be a point of discontinuity. But um, you want to look to see if you can factor anything out. So then here we have on top y equals x minus 2. So we probably want to see if we can factor any x minus 2s out from the denominator. x squared minus, or x, yeah, x squared minus 16 is, or x to the fourth minus 16 factors in x squared minus 4 times x squared plus 4. Like that. And then, furthermore, we can factor x squared minus 4 into x minus 2 times x plus 2. Nothing else really factors out. So these cancel, and then you just have 1 over x plus 2 over x squared plus 4. So it's just 1, because you're just factoring out one common pair. That's kind of the way I would think about it. So the answer is A. All right, 22. We have the integral from four to six of f of x dx, and we have the integral of f of x dx from 10 to four. We're told that they're equal to five and eight, and we gotta find the value of four f of x plus 10 from six to 10. So here's what we gotta do. Since these are like in reverse order, that's going to tell us that when you have the integral from 4 to 10 of f of x, it's going to equal negative 8. That's just a property. And then we know the integral from 4 to 6 of f of x is 5. So let's break this into pieces. So the integral from 4 to 6 of f of x dx plus the integral from 6 to 10 of f of x dx is going to have to equal negative 8 because that's what this is, you know that's what essentially this is you're integrating from 4 to 10 in just one a group so this whole thing equals, equals negative 8 or given that the integral from 4 to 6 is 5 so we're just solving this 5 plus this integral is going to be negative 8 So then we know the integral from 6 to 10 of f of x dx is going to be negative 13. Now, from there, we can just plug this into there. And then we evaluate, and then we just kind of do just really just more of an algebra thing. So we're integrating from 6 to 10. So we take the antiderivative of 4 f of x, but we don't need that because we know that the integral of f of x from 6 to 10 is going to be negative 13. We already know what this value is. So let me just break this up into this because I like showing all the work. You may not need it, but here we go anyways. So I can break this integral into these two integrals. Like that. We know what the integral from we know what the integral from six to ten is of f of x, and we're just going to multiply that by four. So this first part is just four times negative thirteen plus integrating the function or the antiderivative of ten. Integrating that, we just get ten x. So we use integrate ten x from six to ten, and then here is just the plug in and chugging so we just do our integration properties so then 10 times 10 100 minus 10 times 6 so we have negative 52 plus 40 and so our answer is negative 12. Problem 23, what 
what is the equation of the line tangent to the graph of y at x equals one? Okay, so looks like they have their answers in point slope form. So it's it's the same as slope intercept form, it's just written. I mean the same concept as slope intercept form. It's just broken up in a different manner. Um so remember we have back in our algebra days, y equals mx plus b for a straight line. But with slope point slope form or point slope form is usually what they call it. They do y one y minus y one equals m times x minus x one. So we first let's solve for m or the slope. Since we're talking about calculus here, the slope of, of this function is just going to be the derivative at the specific point, since we're told at x equals 1. So to find the slope, we let's just take the derivative of y. So y prime will be 2e to the 2x. And we want to find it at a specific point. So we have to plug in 1. So we have 2e to the 2. We'll pull 2e to the 2 times 1. Y, 2e, 2e squared is our value of m. So from there, we go y minus y1 equals 2e squared times x minus x1. So y1 and x1 are just the points that this line is going through when x is 1. Since x is 1, we just plug in 1 into here to get y. So y will be e squared. So we have the point 1 minus e, 1 and e squared for x and y. So then y1 is our e squared. And x1 is our 1. And let's see what matches up. Answer will be D. Okay, 24, find the limit as x goes to infinity of this function. So it looks like, so it's always first try direct substitution. So we just plug in infinity and see what happens. So we have four times the natural log of infinity over three times infinity. So we get an infinity over infinity. We get what's called an indeterminate form. So when you get something that doesn't make sense, we use L'Hopital's rules or L Hospital's rule, if you, if you remember it being called like that. Um, so you, we just take the derivative of the top over the, the derivative of the bottom. The derivative of the top will be 4 times 1 over x plus 0. The derivative of 3x is just 3. This just becomes 4 over x over 3 or 4 over 3x. Then we try it again. We plug it in infinity into here. So the limit as x goes in, as x goes to infinity for this will just be four over infinity, which essentially is another way of thinking about zero. And then so we actually get a value here that is going to be problem. Uh, answer will be C. Twenty-five. Or I like I like these ones. All right. Um. If the graph of the function f here, find h of x. Or let h of x where it's defined as this equation x plus one times f of x. We got to find h prime of four. So let's just find first and the derivative of h of x. So h prime of x. We'll be using the product rule. We take the derivative of this, which is just going to be 1. Leave the f of x as is. Then we now leave the x plus 1 as is. And then we multiply that by the derivative of f of x. Now, let me zoom out a little bit. OK, so here, if we want to find h prime of 4, we're essentially going to evaluate all of these when x is 4. We have 1 times f of 4 plus 4 plus 1 
plus plus four, yeah, plus four plus one, so five times f prime of four. Now, f of four is just the value of the graph when x is four. So that's just going to be four. It goes through the point four, four. We have four plus five times f prime of four. Now, the graph also shows you f prime of four. If you just remember that it's going to be the slope at that point. So the slope of this graph, it's just, it's a constant because it's a straight line. The slope here is just negative two. So this is just becomes five times negative two. And then we get four minus 10 and we get negative six as our answer. And so we have A as our solution. All right, there you go. Um, Again, feel, please give me any feedback, any questions that you have, and always make sure to check my work. I'm not going to say that I'm perfect. Um, and, and I'll always try to keep up with, with one, I like to do pieces of these, of these practice tests at a, at a time in case you're wondering. But um, again, please let me know if I'm going too fast, too slow, and I can always adjust and you know make sure that it's easy to go follow. But um, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.